chiến 2005 chính thức trở lại cùng Sunbox Hoàng Kim, Công Thành liên đấu tại hồi ức võ lâm truyền kỳ 2005 chấm hết. Thinking about the rel, they lock it in. So strong 5v5s, right? You have a lot of AOE coming out from the rel plus the Talia to just give ruler the space to unload. But still, TS, I this entire time. But as level two is hit by top esports, Tien's moving into the bottom side of the map. JDG, they've got to be cautious. The ward now spots Tien as he moves in, but Ruler and Missing are in all kinds of trouble. Both flashes available, but that's all that remains. Knock up onto Ruler as the stun is being stacked, and it's first blood into the. We're all about just outplaying individually. It feels like top esports. Maybe winning in both categories these Actually days. Actually makes it down. Again, he was already on his way. Uh, knew that JDG would be looking for a gank on this timing, <laughs> but just, here we go. I think we're just going to scrap here. Yagao's moving over and he's level 6. The Weaver's Wall available here is Yagao trying to win out the Honey Fruit <laughs> Battle. The top side the bubble hits too, though. Tien moves in, but Tien's just not that tanky yet. And he ends up going down. The Weaver's Yagao's dropping a ward. In the meantime, Kanavi wants an angle on the mid lane. Cream the target. Magnet Storm comes on in. The flick back is there as well. Can he get out with a shield? Empress defied. The dash. The shield doesn't now, even... He's an angle potentially to fight. Ruler are missing a little bit chunked, but the wild growth does mean... That they're relatively safe. Mako gets himself a bit of movement speed, but the Weaver's Wall comes down. Mako might have to flash here, but the Polymorph denies it, and he's stuck in no man's land. JD really nice play from JDG. Two Weaver's Walls, two picks off of the back of in as Mako. He's got an absolute feast for himself. Three whole wards to kill all by himself. He's going to be happy with that one. But Kanavi's moving over. Flashes away from the bubble. And back to back deaths for Mako. JDG, uh, yeah. Not a whole bunch of gold taken early. TP's coming out as the Herald on the map here. Stun comes on through. This time the CC chain in favor of top esports. But Kanavi is so tanky in the triple flank back. Sets it all up. But Ruler's knocked in the middle of everyone. And 369. Negan's galore is loving every second of this. Cream chasing off Flandre as Yagao desperate to escape with his life. But 369 ain't letting him go anywhere. Pulled back in and blasted to another L. Yeah. Knocked back to start that fight off. It looked like he was the one playing this here to start the fight. Yeah, you you have Come like... On. So we're just going to already start playing towards the, the opposite half of the map. So Tienel's uh, secured this. You can see Yagao moving up. Herald slammed into the mid lane. So mid lane tier one taken. It could be a top lane tier one as well. As you can see, both solo lane is there for JDG. But that does open an opportunity for top esports to answer in the mid lane. And there are a couple of pings on towards that second quarter HP. Well, that's enough, because 369 will land his ult during the CC chain and grab that kill. So it does feel like this is a yeah. almost long range. I'm going to keep looking for it. I mean, with the gal's wall, there would be a world that could section them off, but they're exposing themselves to be engaged on. Ult lands onto Flandre. Kanavi dives into the mix, but he's just not tanky enough. Gets in 1v5. The knock up on Cream denies the ultimate and the polymorph as well. Flandre saving his AD carry. His roller is trying to stack. The front to back continuing. But top esports still a man up, muscling forwards and return to the Drake. It looks like they're, they're hoping to get the resets out for their soul laners to TP them back in. Jackie Love gets to the other side of the wall. Mako finds a little pocket where he's safe. As now they dive back oh, in once Jackie? more. TP to return from 369. Flandre has been abandoned by the squad of 369. Dives in to find more. Missing the target as the slow lands onto everyone else as well. It's absolute cartilage carnage from the knee cannons in the middle of the fight. TN stops the escape as a triple comes through for Cream. Huge on the Azir. Now it's going to end up with TS finally being able to get this Drake and actually stacking into a more meaningful advantage, right? I'm excited to see what item breakpoints TS are at now once these backs come off. And for JDG, man, I don't know why they felt so, so tight. Baron still in darkness, 7k. This top esports peel and look for Kanabi. They really want to fight off the back of it. Magnet Storm isn't going to do anything. And in he goes with the Empress Divide. Fear beyond death shuts down the Zeri. Metal is better than lightning. The Culling comes through to finish up. Flandre, no, gets over the wall, but stunned in the end and will be eviscerated. Missing. Uh, they've completely exploded this gold lead. And now with the Baron, it feels like they should just be able to completely take You got to keep one of the quirks alive and kicking. So since you've gotten rid of a bit of the aggression, you have to keep the funny barons. 
Yeah, I'm on board Chow for goes. that. I'm, I'm very much on board for that. Did you see the amount of damage Cream was getting on that mid lane tower as well? The grass Bazir. Obviously, you get to run demolish. Uh, top esports, they see the Weaver's Wall and they're just going to commit past it. And That's one of the downsides of the Talia roll. If you're behind, uh, a lot of the time it can be ignored. It's just like the last one, too, where it really has no function. And even in these situations, you can tell JDG, no idea what to do. Typically, you'd, you'd commit to one side of the fight, right? If, if Cream's mid, maybe you could send two people mid, try and pin some down, or you go for the 5v4 bot side. But you can tell JDG now that they really can't be able to take the front to back with where items are right now. Konami gets a cleanse from his support. Magnuston comes on through, but the front to back just isn't strong enough. Fear beyond death for a fifth kill for 369 the ergot working out the first big lucian working out but more importantly cream stepping up this is his year of control mages and it feels like this is a victory lap here in game number one magnificent performance as the nexus is opened up jackie love survives ruler kicked into the back line but he can't get any damage down and the nexus will be focused top esports start strong in the series very out of place especially once you, you added in the leona you have this complete composition that just wants to fully send it onto the azir and the varus is it hang on is this like a long range wave not that big right now is level three hit by jack Love and mako the jdg bot lane not that chunked right now as the minion wave moves in tn is committing to the dive missing the target here ruler underneath the tower though and just gets obliterated mako moves out tn you've got to get out from underneath the tower but he just jumps straight onto missing diving back Trade back too aggressively no and in a rough spot but still at the very least i like that jdg quickly realized hey actually ts are gonna be the ones who are gonna be able to take this objective bot again they have the Callista. this should be their win con uh and immediately pivots up towards the top side to be able to get this and even gives Fondry a bit more freedom. I mean, manages to find essentially just an all-in onto missing. That's two summoners burnt. Ult fall to bear. <laughs> but Dragon's up. And both these teams actively wanting to fight this again. There's no package this time. Kanavi. Kick onto two as Kanavi keeps himself alive. Yang out forced out of the top side of the fight, but the chains land. Tien forced to use his credit card, forced to flash as well. Flandre's followed him in here. 369 is still up top right now. Top esports. They fully retreat. They concede the Drake, but they get a solo lane at top that gets to just farm. Yeah, so making the conscious choice. Hey, it's fine. They've committed five members here. They get the objective. Now it's about getting some play. Feel most competent, but it is giving JDG a lot of freedom to start getting some of these neutrals. Cream knocked back. Flashes gets underneath the tower. Kanavi gets a bit of damage down. Will finish the job. I was a little bit nervous for a second there, but Kanavi walks away. Nice dive from JDG. Punishing on the top side. That'll open up a tier one as well. And you can see there's no answer back by TS. Looks like Flandre did just willingly accept backing off, so no angle was open. Try and trade this straight for an inhib on the top side, but 369 is there. I don't think there's a way that they're thinking they need an extra man or hoping to push a bit more, but I feel like that would have been overzealous, you know, at the best of times. Uh, but for JDG, I think it makes sense, right? You know Cream was picking up that package. You're like, hey, again, it, it's only the third Drake of the game. We both have one apiece. 369, though. Two-man play onto the Urgot. Can they bring down the crab man? Doesn't look like it right now. As Kanavi gets a flash kick. Maybe they can after all. Yag out the target, but 369 can do nothing. It's yeah, log. It feels like their, their control of the map just is not there right now. And Flandre even gets... Wait, his, he can finish this tower before the TP comes through. Yeah, the TP especially. What a, what a questionable... Oh, fight. Fight. As uh, Ruler's just been caught. That's a huge pick for top esports. I really wish we could have seen the south for that one. That's, uh, that's just a massive opportunity now. Or oh. is it? Yagao's having none of it. Kicks 369 underneath the tower. CN goes down as well. Two come through for JDG. Now in Kanavi, I feel like he probably would have. Uh, yep. have given his life. This, this turret should go down. Top Esports trying their best to defend this one. Solar flag goes wide Ooh. from Mako. And now Tien's caught on the bottom side of the play. Top Esports blast cone out safety, but Flandre looking for Cream as well. Still has the Valkyrie available and gets over to the rest of his team, but still the tier one taken. And JDG now can move towards a tier two once again. They've got a lot of damage between these characters. They've got three groups to work with as well. The tier two, not something that Jakulov can realistically defend by himself. Cream moves over for the wave clear, but it's too little too late. And it's J opt into contesting this, because again, it, it would be sole point for Tez, but it wouldn't be end of the world. 
this package has to be huge and it's not he just uses it defensively as in the meantime mako is caught it's too easy for jdg top esports all over the place in this second game and what a punish as well jdg looking immaculate with this composition and just no answer whatsoever from Tez. Here is Flandre trying to zone the rest of the team. 369 now on the top side of the play, trying to flank 4K on the Baron. JDG not willing to just flip it. Missing, finds the engage on two. As Mako flashes out safety. Oh. Creed got himself out as well, but Konami only a kick onto one. And Jackie Love turns onto the enemy jungler. Tien tanking on the front side. And Top Esports finally get a good start to a fight. Flandre with another knockup though as Cream gets over to safety. There's no follow-up from the rest of the team. Flandre gets one. But 369 answers on to missing. Gonna lead to a Baron because they're hoping to dissuade this. Yagao and Ruler, the carries dive in. Flash from Ruler. Yagao uses his ult defensively, but that's so much used from JDG. Oh. Is it an ult? Oh, He's just gonna dive to Baron. What a fumble as Yagao takes a solo kill. Jackie Love diving forwards and they will answer. Any moment, you'd assume he's probably waiting for yeah. his package. 369 doesn't have a ward here. It's down to 4k. Are they just gonna take this one before anyone gets oh. in? JDG grab it on the 50-50. 369 is onto the fight line though. And Ruler demolished as Top Esports looking for the fight. Kanabi gets out of the top side of the pivot. He's on the wrong side of the map. He dives back into the action and surely will fall. He at least gets the enemy jungler. Cream will fall too. But it's an ace for Top Esports. All the Barons are now off the board right after they happen. Mid lane turret up for the taking. What will be Soul Point for TS is right behind them, man. They have taken everything on the map. Zero and four. He's on three and a half items, almost at that fourth item mark now. Top Esports. They open themselves up to being collapsed on. Yagao slowed by the solar flare. Mako flashes to get the engage, but Konami denies the follow-up from Jackie Love. Fate's called safe. Mako is live. 369 TPs in. And oh. that's a huge pop blossom. It's only onto two in the end. The knockups are there. Mako not tanky enough, and he goes down. Chains land onto Cream as well. And the follow-up is there from JDG. They finally find their moment. 369 can't finish the job. And JDG come roaring into life. And all of them somehow survive. Now we got 40 second death timers on our carries. JDG, they might go for this. Tian can't do anything about this one. They should be able to end the game here. Still 30 second death timers. And thank goodness, JDG show up in this second series, in this rematch. Tian underneath the Nexus Towers, the minion wave arriving. Missing will fall, but he's happy to sacrifice himself and get a game on the board. They will not repeat the last matchup. But now that we have these comps fully fleshed out, I, I like the flex coming out from TS in the end. I was scared of the Nico coming out earlier for JDG, and it feels like you need something like the Rumble to be able to match the prior top to really just try and, and bully out Blandre. Nice little trade there. Yankao in the mid lane as Cream just trying to clear these waves. He's already uh, 20 stacks through his cull as well, as he will be forced to reset by Yagao. So nice little bit of laning advantage the way that they're playing out. Yeah, I think not a great angle there, but they were hoping to find the turn because Kanavi's still not six. Tien does have smite. Doesn't get Kanavi's now six, and Tien doesn't have his own ultimate available. We just oh. denied by Tien. But there's still 2v3 at the end of the day. It's still coming through onto Kanavi. And they find the kill. 2v3. Top Esports just demolishing JDG. Flandre, no flash available. And 369, you just know he'll punish up on that one. Stun comes on through and slices him in two. Well, he's going to go for the grubs there. Does have prio. Flandre has flash available now. And his ult is about to come off cooldown as well. This could be a tough dive to pull off. But let's see. Black Cleaver already there for 369 as they dive underneath Tien, tanking, using the aftershock. I said it could be tough, not even remotely. You don't sweat on anyone's brow there. I mean, just having having first completed item this early, right, is too much to be able to deal with Landre looking like paper. He's trying to take one without using that smite to potentially contest a second, but well, I mean, with this much presence from JDG, surely there's no way. He moves back in for anything here. So we'll just be 4 to 2 on the Grubs once again. Nice. Up. 369 toying with the idea as a TP towards this top side. Jackie Love flashes in a straight line. And now the Weaver's wall down. Jackie Love nowhere to go on this one. Taken down. Yagao finds a kill.
be yeah, JDGs no. with where 369's right now in the lane. I mean, 369 is going to finish this tower off, and Flandre, you got to get out of dodge, my friend. That's another 600. For anyone other than Kanavi to, to find access to the back line. Looks like Top Esports not going to actually commit for a fight. Oh, the Weaver's Wall denies the Herald. Strong position they're in with a 3k gold lead, so... A bit behind on the times for TS for 369. Oh my god, Dominus popped it already. Yagao's basically dead, trying to get away, but there's nowhere to run. Missing four star flash, and he's absolutely minced. In the meantime, Jackal of getting dived, and Flandre happy to tank for Ruler. And right, no flash. Call of the Forge God, we can see from Flandre, you know, came out before we were on screen. So Jackal of not having a whole lot of room is. <laughs> Kanav, you're not going to be able to follow that one. Uh oh. Oh, combo comes on through, but there's not really a lot of damage on screen. The Buster Shot keeps him safe, and 369 has arrived on the scene. The damage is there. Missing will fall, and they walk away with their lives on top. It is getting messy. It's getting scrappy, but at the end of the day, TS are still doing this game unfortunately it's just uh, you're against 369 and uh, TN's on the champion that's perfectly setting him up Dominus actually going to be used on the top side as well Black Cleaver stacked Call of the Forge God can it save Flandre's life he doesn't even have flash available and Mako's coming too but it's gonna oh, no, <laughs> uh, had nice moments on the map and, and in some fights but oh, these, this lead just feels insurmountable especially again with the Tristana with how quickly the area may be thinking about fighting this I don't know if it's uh, a fight they can realistically win but a five-man presence moving in towards this mid tier on 369 joining his team and that he's gonna try and get away with a recall has flash up as well the recall ain't gonna work there's a flash there's a charge as well as 369 looking for a little bit more the rest of the team coming over as 369 actually dashes forwards towards Flandre he is not afraid of the reinforcements from JDG he just walks at them menacingly and it pays off started off and this is not one that they need to 50 50 canavi already chunked as well as 369 playing that zoning game no dominus available for him so not as tanky as he'd like canavi just about gets away with his life but that's his flash gone his health bar gone and top esports they don't even fully peel off of the baron no and like you said canavi's low so trying to get a bit of help back by, by uh fighting these raptors but it's gone he got tries to go for the steal but tm presents me in solo queue the rest of the these are my wins in solo queue when the top laner pops off or the mid laner pops off and i'm just uh trying my best balancing varus and tristana in the mid lane and then you've got so much snap and gauge and damage from long range from the supporting cast it feels so incredibly difficult to break the siege from the side of jdg click back onto creep yeah, has been doing a good job of landing those W's. It's just the team is so far behind. I don't know how much you can follow up on it. Flandre kicked out of the bottom side. So gonna just have to back off for now, but still they're fine playing this out. Hell, they still even have tools to try to force Shaded G back like the Equalizer. Play we see many times, right? Drop the Equalizer, force them back and just finish off the two yourself. Looks like they might not even need to do that here with having two barren up cannons. Just playing it slow and steady. You can see 369 moves over to that mid lane while uh, everyone's here defending on the bottom side the long range damage they can just keep this up all day long they've still got a full minute of baron remaining and they'll just keep it going the cannon finally dies but with this wave everybody can move in that'll be one in hip tower taken 369 clears the next wave you can see it's moving on forwards. Flandre tries to start Ooh. the play. Not buffered by Cream. This is the chance as the pop bottom hits three as well. But can they finish the carries? The answer is no. 369 doesn't even bat an eye. Tez lose nothing as 369 tries to finish Ruler on the Fountain. This was a massacre. Top Esports complete control in the third game of the series. And Jackie Love even gets one of the the end. Looks like 369 just going to slam that Cassante to finish things out. So, a lot of potential for mid game skirmishing from both teams. Honestly, you've got huge power spikes from the center and still mid. level one, still not a single CS. And Kanavi threatening a dive now on the bottom side. Ghost going to be popped by 369. Has the W to buffer a lot of the damage to CC. Missing. Walks away with his life. The rule against the harder matchups. So 369 now commits his TP. Will he survive though? The stun doesn't land from Kanavi. And actually, he's locked up Ruler under the tower. The tower shot not quite enough. But it was damn close. Now the redive. Once again, Kanavi tanking up here. 369 gonna die for a second time as Kanavi gets the reset. Yo, with how many minions were waiting in the wings? So JDG 
really feeling oh. fortunate. Oh Damn. no. <laughs> That's a red buff as well. Konami has flash. Oh, he failed. Find an early lead, despite how far ahead Ruler is currently. I mean, naturally, he's going to build an individual lead against the Senna. You expect that, but the two extra kills are just a cherry on top of everything else. Two to one, and a big gold lead to start us off for JDG. It feels like they've won out the lane swap, even though it was top esports that started. Yeah, and now Tien might be able to find a bit of a time here. He's going to be spotted out by the ward. Can they find the angle? Ruler, no. Summon is available and gets caught by Mako. The root will land as well. Ruler down. Tien forced to flash, and it's a kill into Jackie Love's pocket. Even if TS have, been, have managed to keep up and go. I feel like this kind of meta really rewards, like, ARAM players, <laughs> where you're not really playing the matchups that you're so used to. three grubs. Let's focus on clearing these camps, which is the right decision. And the fact that you moved everyone up to this top side to answer that dive means that now the grubs get to be sort of the reward for, for that rotation on the side of top esports. So three for three on the grubs. 15k on either side. The only it's difference. there, JDG. It's the smallest of constellation prizes. Oh, oh. Arrow in the play. mid lane, it hits onto Cream, the flick back is there, Konami's moving in as well, but the Railgun keeps Cream alive for a second, oh. and he flashes forwards for the kill, what a play from Cream to go one for one! And even Stevens on the scoreboard, ever so slight goal lead for top esports, but not that much to The spring split, and you know, we've only recently had multiple seeds, Cream is caught by yet another arrow, that cooldown is so short, this time, can he get away? No, he cannot. Ruler grabs the kill for himself. And now JDG won a little bit more face call to follow up on the engage. TN knocked into the air is missing. Ooh. It's gone too deep on this one. Kanabi threatening the backside, but he's threatened himself. He goes down and it's Mako to grab the kill as he dives under for more. Jackie Love chasing. Root lands onto Yaga, but they don't have the damage to finish it off. Mako trying to escape, but he's flicked back, gets the shield before he goes down. Jackie Love has a bit of sustain for his supporters missing. Gonna be rooted up. Ruler getting onto the front line. Tien goes back in once more. How are they still going in this one? Yagao falls as Jackie Love just has so much range. Missing goes down. <laughs> and the last. Esports can move into River pretty much with impunity. Yeah. Oh, his arrow, but it's only onto the Tom Kench. Cream goes wide of the charm as well. Mako tanky flashes out to safety. Kanabi is so low already. And Tien knocks him up. Will finish the job. The spear goes deep into the hearts of JDG. His 369 finds his way onto the backside as well. Dashes out to safety. Mako saves his top laner and top esports. And now gonna lead to another fight win for top esports. Another dragon. And only furthering this gold lead is Cream can TP top to try and save. And yeah, just uh, these plays really aren't there. TS to Doing such a great job in this series overall at being able to counteract JD Gaming. The spirit rush came out from Cream there, forces out Yagao's own ultimate. Just sheer respect coming through his Tien. Forced to flash as well, trying to get that ward, but will not be able to find it. Missing now, getting a little bit of damage down, but the Honey Fruit pretty much answers it. And missing suddenly is the target. Instead, Equalizer comes on through them. Jackie Love getting absolutely chunked to make up, has to eat him up early on in the play. 369, though, soaks the arrow, gets his team out of dodge. You know, oh, yeah. having the Blood Song too, now Edge of Night, an opportunity there in pocket, so really making nice pace with the item advantages that they have over their opposing uh, laners. And the important thing about that Blood Song as well is this. I got a second Konami. Uh, you're going real deep there. Railgun comes through and Cream finishes the kill. I mean, what? I, I don't know what he's. Last series too. It's really great to see Tien when he's on form. Oh, Yagao going to be caught out. Flashes away the charm. Not used though. Cream holds it until the flash is gone. Even saves the Spirit Rush so he doesn't get stunned. Beautiful from Tien and Cream. Kanabi and Missing want to punish the pick. A TP though means they can't do like, like This the is biggest bounty. brutal. This is absolutely brutal. It looked so even to start off with. It doesn't feel that way anymore. Equalizer does absolutely nothing as Cream is now on a flank as well. Kadabi's already low. Ruler forced away. The Orbit Deception lands on the second dash, and Cream is just styling on JDG. The Railgun flies on through top east. I mean, I'm enjoying watching the Cream Ari this game as well. I feel like these scraps have been looking real good for him. Safely walk up. No one. I mean, even Kanavi being on the Viego, if he goes too far forward and gets 
caught by something that can just burst him down, Yao! Oh yeah, Gao's roots at the rail gun in, and this could be everything Top Esports have been dreaming of. They're headed towards finals if they can finish this game. Two picks come on through, and they barrel towards the mid lane. Tier 2 will be taken. Kanavi, Ruler, and Missing, they have to stop this barrel going down. We're gonna see what they're able to do. He's about to come off cooldown again. Cream saving that last charge. It's JDG, they move to the mid lane, the arrow just goes into the Baron pit. They'll get one tier one tower. It's in trade for Baron. Kanavi, can he make a miracle happen? I don't think so. Backs away, toppies. And now, I mean, this could be the fight that decides it all. Oh, oh, Flandre is caught and he's just not tanky. Cream resets on the Spirit Rush, looking for more as well. Kanavi caught with the charm. Can't quite finish Finals. them. They were there in 2022, but 2023, it eluded them. And it's nice to see 18 to five Ocean Souls to top esports after his vacation over on JDG. And now wins out the matchup. Diving in the mid lane as the charm did land. The rail comes to quite land, but Ruler goes down anyway. It's Mako to find him. And Kanavi, he gets one reset, but that is all he will get. Top Esports break open the base. And now we're going to see how much more they could get. Actually leaning over towards spot side. They don't really have a whole lot to fear. Uh, JDG still going to have to be careful about a potential dive just coming right on out the bat. Sports on the cusp. You know how keen they are for this. You know how much this means to the players. But can they put the final nail in JDG's coffin? This will be two in hips taken. Jackie Love, 5 0 oh, and 11, setting up that previous pick as well. Magus has a third in him. Could be opened wide by Top Esports. But I don't even know how a miracle could happen. How do you even start the fight? There, uh, Munch, the miracle. The miracle is the fact that, you know, at least if JDG can't get the chance to go for a fourth title in a row, 369 can, right? 369 can go carry that torch because it looks insurmountable. Kanavi looking for the angle. Oh, but he's gone too deep and Cream immediately dives onto the rest of his team. It's as one-sided as you like, but Top Esports will be over the moon with this. It's a 3-1 in the end as they route JDG. The rivalry lives on between these two legendary organizations, but this chapter is written in Top Esports Inc. Top Esports, just having such an incredible run in this playoffs. Again, two series in a row. They're able to completely take it to JDG, and JDG just had no answers. 369 will return to the finals. He will return to MSI, and he will attempt to defend.